one. And the fireworks turned out to be for the kicking team, didn't they? Yeah. I mean, go down there, make a play, knock it free, and end up with the football. And for the team who's supposed to have the ball, now their defense has to run out on the field and see if they can slow things down a bit. A quick scramble for the helmets, and now we switch sides. Now a first carry here for Robinson. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Pretty effective run there. Now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality and pound the rock. Here's second and three. Robinson with another carry. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. From the gun on third down, Stein. He's got it. Touchdown, Commanders. Curtis Samuel, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Commanders march right down the field in three plays to claim the early advantage. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Commanders 7, Texans nothing. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Start on the ground with Pierce. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I tell you what, CD, this Washington defense, very strong in the victory last week. And I'm eager to see the game plan and try to attack them this week because when you take it away four times through interceptions, what do you do now when you go into a game? Do you decide you can't throw the ball? Do you try and run it more? Or do you tell your quarterback, make sure you see your guys open before you deliver? Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Robert Woods, the intended receiver that time. And it's third and five. You talk about this Washington defense. They were very good last week in the win over the Saints. And I'm eager to see the game plan and trying to attack them this week because when you take it away four times through interceptions, do you now decide that I can't throw the ball against this team and try and run it like crazy? Or do you challenge him? This is going to be fun. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. First and ten, it's Pierce. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. If you start assessing what went wrong last week, Charles, and their loss, had nothing to do with the ground game. They ran it well. And you also have to say to yourself as a team, don't go away from what worked. That's not the reason the game was lost. Running the football over time, when you do it consistently, 
usually translates into wins. And they're hoping to do it consistently here. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And he'll take this to the 46. The Texans had two and two through the first four weeks of the season. And they come in losers of two straight, so trying to turn things around here. And you just mentioned two straight, and when you're talking about two games, that's nothing to panic about. They feel like they've been a little bit unlucky in the last couple. This is a club that's more than capable of turning things around, and I expect them to play really well here. Second down and eight. Stroud. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Quan Martin. And the Commanders are in great shape here as they take over at their 46-yard line. And this Charles, definitely not what they were wanting to see. Remember, he threw three interceptions in the loss last week, and now he gives the ball away again here in the very first quarter. And you have to think that this was drilled into him all week, too, by his teammates, by his coaching staff. They've told him all week long, we've got to protect the football. They probably crossed that fine line with giving him the right advice and saying it too much, and it turned out that it got into his head a little bit. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? On third and two, Stein looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. First catch here by McLaurin, and he's got himself a first down. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. This is caught. It's Boyd. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. 25 yards that time. They'll run with Robinson. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great, because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. Off play action. Stein. Touchdown, Washington. Curtis Samuel with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Commanders are off to a 13-0 first quarter lead. They've got to be thrilled on the road right now. Touchdown, turnover, touchdown, and quickly trying to make it 14 to nothing. Yeah, and you mentioned it already. On the road, to be able to go into someone else's house and establish a start like that, obviously your confidence rises in a big way, and you're putting some doubt in their minds. Extra point by Sly is up and good, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And that'll be a little too hot to handle as it will skip through the end zone for a touchback here. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So, decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So, they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? When you look at this defense, 
They were very good last week in the win over the Saints. And all defensive teams that I know talk about creating turnovers, takeaways they call them. And anytime you can get two or more in a game, you've had a really, really good performance. They exceeded that number in a big way. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. First and 10, it's Stroud. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes, knock it away. Here goes Stroud again. His throw incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'm guaranteed he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. On third and 10, they go flying past the marker and get nearly 40 yards. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football as they've got it with a first and 10. Throwing again is Stroud. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone, following a pickup of about seven or eight. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Now Stroud. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. Stroud to throw it. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. I appreciate the aggressiveness trying to go for it there on fourth down, but you're in the red zone, had three points in your back pocket. Instead, Charles, they throw it away. Certainly a big call to go for it on fourth down. As you said, in the red zone, definitely going to cost them three points, and we'll see how that affects the game as time goes on. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. 
Well, partner, fast forward with me for a second. Remember, next week they have the open week, so they're going to get some extended rest. Does that change how they manage the rest of this one? I think it does a little bit, but not by too much, because you're right. You get the extra rest, you get a chance to heal up and kind of, you know, do a little bit of a reset for this team. But it's also seven extra days to think back to the last time you were on the field. So now a little more importance on what they're getting done because they carry it with them for essentially two weeks. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 15 yards the pickup, first down Washington. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009, 2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Eight yards on the pickup, brings up second and two at the 40 yard line. Two yards to go, second down. Now here's a little touch pass as they tap it quickly to their receiver. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. But just a simple tap pass, but it, it pays off in a big way. And sometimes the simple stuff causes the most problems for a defense because there's a breakdown in communication there. When that receiver goes behind the line of scrimmage and it looks like he's going in motion, someone either has to go with him or he has to be passed off to another defender. Somehow they didn't get that communicated well and it turned into a nice play. He's to the 15. Touchdown, Washington! Brian Robinson, Jr. with his fourth rushing touchdown on the year. And the Commanders have moved out in front by three touchdowns. The extra point by Sly is up and good, and it's now 21 to nothing. Washington kick team back out there now as they will send this one away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Play clock down to zero, and this is not the way to start a drive. Now problems right out of the gate. We're going to get a delay. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted.
So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Running it out of the gun with Pierce. And he'll go down at the 26 following a gain of six. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. That ball caught. Brandon Ayuk. He's to the 15. Touchdown, Houston. Brandon Ayuk, 74 yards. And the Texans get a bit closer. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then it's the wide receiver. Great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. And they have the game here followed by the open date on their calendar next weekend. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are, but let's face it, partner. They can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time while they're playing this one. They've got to take care of business first. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Back to Robinson now on first down. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. You've got to be impressed by the defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down and eight. Operating from the gun. Stein, open man is Samuel, complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Two touchdowns for him already in this first half. This one good for a first down. Talk about a big first half. Already has the two touchdowns, adding to his receiving total there and picking up the first down. He's coming off the line so fast. I think he's intimidating the defensive backs with his explosiveness, and he's chipping away at their confidence. On first and ten, it's Robinson. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Looking to throw, Stein. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Carl Lawson, what a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. Well, that's what they have to do more defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he will find his man, Samuel. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Tressway on fourth down is sent out to punt. Back deep is a very dangerous Mike Hughes. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And the Texans will take over. Set 
The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've gotten pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, at the same tempo, and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. Those are the kinds of plays right there that show you why he's the number three man in the NFL in terms of receiving yards. Also tells you there's a full combination of what he's got going in his game. You name it from route running to catching the football. That's why he's able to produce those types of numbers. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here first and ten. They'll find Paris Campbell that's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A really good pickup of 28 yards. A run for Pierce out of the gun. And maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25 yard line. Now the Texans are going the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Another carry for Pierce. 54 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. It certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I'd keep going back to him. Here now, second and four. Stroud sets up the play action. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Stroud working out of the gun. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Patterson's kick is good. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. A final 
little shot before break. Stein. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. So we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL, and it's a presentation of EA Sports. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis on Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. So Washington in a good spot. They've got the lead. They will get the football as the second half gets underway. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone. So we will start here at the 25. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game as a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them too. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Back to throw. Stein. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. To throw on third down. Stein. Middle of the field. He's got McClellan. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a first down. His fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. The throw over the middle taken in, and he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw, and also a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first and 10, Stein. That's out wide here for Robinson. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. 109 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Second and a couple. Operating from the gun, Stein. That's complete to his receiver, McClellan. 
And the Commanders are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Looking to throw. Stein. It's complete on the bubble screen. That's Robinson. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Only a yard of the completion. It's second and goal. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Mostert he is not going to advance very far. He'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Call the gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit because he actually handed it off. I thought with the two touchdown passes he's thrown in this one already, he'd go ahead and fling and try. And he will take it in. Touchdown, Commanders. It's their quarterback. A four-yard touchdown scamper. And the Commanders take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. An extra point by Sly is up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Texans take over first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. On first down, here's Stroud. They'll get this into the hands of Ayu. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of 32 that time. I'm shaking my head a little bit as an ex-DB, but I'm also nodding because any edge you can get as a receiver, you take it. Runs a stutter go there, about 12 yards downfield, then chops his feet like he's breaking off his route. And then he takes off and goes downfield again. Excellent job selling it, and it leads to a big gain. Hand off right side to Pierce. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four on the first down play. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. They'll have to deal with a second and 14 now after the loss. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And boy, this burgundy and gold defense charged up now. They stop him behind the line again. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Play action. Stroud now. Ayuk bringing it in on the crossing route here. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 36. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. From Commander's territory now, it's first and 10 at the 36. And Stroud now to throw. And his throw here is going to be incomplete. Well, partner, they certainly played up to their top 10 defensive ranking this week. They've stifled this opposing offense throughout this game. This contest is now lopsided because of their efforts, and there's still a quarter to go. Second and 10. Thanks for tagging along with us here from Houston, Texas. Here's Stroud. That's to the veteran. It's Robert Woods. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made in Washington's 18. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, 
but plenty of room to run after. They intercept Stroud again, the third time in this game. Picked off by Quan Martin, and the Commanders are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting negative or otherwise and turn it into positives moving forward and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards but no more than that second down three quarters in the books you are watching the nfl on ea sports back now in houston it's Washington with the football and the lead as we start the fourth. Here's second and seven now from the 28. And McClure in the motion man right. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Robinson. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. 119 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Now Will Anderson gets to him for the tackle. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they there he goes, right side. Now inside the 25. Touchdown, Washington. Raheem Mostert. His first touchdown on the year. And the Commanders are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And they open the lead up now to 25. Texans 10. Kick team out there for the Commanders as they send this one away. And not a good return at all. Down inside the 10, all the way back at the 7. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. And what is going on here? Are they serious? First down, and they're in punt formation. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. But not that any of the points would be needed, but CD, they've got enough time left here. They can definitely score on this drive, maybe even an ensuing drive as well if they really want to drive home this landslide victory. Yeah, we're certainly about to see just how aggressive they want to be here down the stretch. And what some coaches do is they try and meet it halfway, meaning they want to continue to run their offense, but they'll put in a lot of backups to do it and then tell the opposing coach, hey, I had to get them some work, too. I can't just let them sit over on the sidelines all the time. Second and six. Oh, 
They get 17 there. Good for a commander's first down. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they are powering through, and they're controlling this game. Now Rodgers, and he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. They'll run, it's Rodgers. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. And Chris Barnes there on the stop. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Here's Rodriguez now on second down. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That burst good for 20 and a first down. And having built that kind of a lead, they're able to do whatever they want right now. All momentum on their side, especially now running the football. Yeah, you're talking about a defense being on their toes. They don't know what's going to hit them <laughs> next at this point. No, they went from toes to heels, and they're trying to figure out how to get back to the toes part. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 41. They'll run it here. This is Rodgers. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners. Now a handoff to Rodriguez. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. So it's commander's football as we get back to it. Second down and a little more than a yard here. They'll run here with Rodriguez. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he's going to have a commander's first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. This is where, you know, fourth quarter, you got the lead, you give it to the big guy. Defensively kind of sucks the will out of them, doesn't it? Because they don't want to tackle him right now this late in the game. But you say that with accusatory tones. I mean, <laughs> you know, but you're exactly right. I know it's not something we actually want to talk about, but as a defender, four quarters worth of trying to bring people down, four quarters worth of pounding, and now late in the game, here comes that big guy coming at you. And a lot of guys are wondering where they want to come up and make that tackle at this stage of the game. Thank <laughs> you. 
So a victory here for the Commanders. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So for Washington, they move back over 500 at 3-2 and two now on the year. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for the Texans, they drop.